But a small group of your employees, about 200, wrote a letter saying that they wish that you would reconsider because they said free speech and paid speech are not the same. Do they have a point? Well, this is a, clearly a very complex issue, and a lot of people have, have a lot of different opinions. At the end of the day, um, I, I just think that in a democracy, people should be able to see for themselves uh, what politicians are saying. Even if the ads are containing false information. That's the, I that's think that the people issue. should be able to judge for themselves the character of politicians. What we're saying here, if, if you're Gail King and that ilk, is Mr. Zuckerberg, don't you think your 23-year-old algorithm engineers should be able to decide uh, what news the uh, 360 million people in the United States are able to read, see, and share? How utterly ridiculous is that? And it, it would be ridiculous no matter what the worldview is. Uh, that is it, is, it is a ridiculous sentiment. You're not serious about being a free people. If, if you believe, regardless of the ideology being pushed, a small batch of a couple dozen young people who are likely not married or have no children, have never been fired from a job, built a business, have never lived any aspect of what an adult life actually is yet. And, and the biggest concern they have is, will the Trump trade war raise the cost of my avocado toast? And is it is it... Is it orange theory, um, you know, or some other, you know, trendy gym membership club? I don't know. I don't know where to decide. They're both in the strip mall down the street. The idea that this is the group out there in Silicon Valley that should decide what everybody sees, shares and reads is so undeniably ridiculous. That the only reason leftists are even postulating this is because it's the last hope they have. They've lost the information battle. And this is the only hope they have. And remember I told you last month, Twitter dropping political ads had nothing to do, had nothing to do with wanting honesty on Twitter. 80% of Twitter accounts are outside the U.S., which means only 20% are here. And it is the more lefty progressive forum. Facebook, even, even my kids joke now, my even, I'm not even a boomer. My kids give me an okay boomer when I talk about posting stuff on Facebook. All right. <laughs> Facebook is where the Gen X and the baby boom, that is their social media haunt. And that, and the, and those are the generations more likely to vote Republican. That's what this was about. It was about creating an aura of isolation around Facebook, which is still by far the biggest social media giant. With over 80% of Americans have a Facebook account. Less than 20% of Americans, or only 20% of Americans have a Twitter account. And the percentage of those that are on it regularly or have 100 followers or more is in the single digits. The reality is that if the president didn't, wasn't able to use this as his primary vehicle to get around the media narratives every day, the, the amount of value Twitter would have to anybody outside of the left America, unless you like to follow sports or things of that nature, where you're just using it for uh, a, a news aggregator, but the amount of opinion sharing it would, it would have without the presence of Donald Trump um, among anybody in the what's left of America, it's, it's literally, it would just be a bunch of lefties talking to themselves. That's all it would be. Facebook is where the majority of people who vote Republican that are on social media hang out and, and communicate with one another. That's and, and that now this is telling you that I was right. Gail King doing that interview. Think about this is a this is a, 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 a journalist literally saying. Can, can you cut? Would you please be willing to cut down on the amount of information that people are allowed to see? Because she's not a journalist. She's a hacktivist. 